We've arrived at the brickyard. Two weeks of champ car preparation and a couple days of Atlantic preparation have brought us to this. It's the Saturday before the 108th Indianapolis 500, and we still have a pack capacity crowd almost. 300,000 people on hand to watch the Atlantic Championship take on the brickyard. It is Jace Clark on pole position. The former champ car driver never got to race the Indianapolis 500 last year. He was injured at Homestead in a crash, missed the 500 and a couple other races. So his first experience at the Brickyard is a pole position, and he is ahead of Sean Jackson, who will start alongside him in row number one. You see the starting grid. This is the same way they'll be set up for the Prius festivities tomorrow for the 500. This signature three abreast that we used to see back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s is how they have them parked up on the grid. They'll line up in their traditional 2x2 format once they get rolling. It's, again, a Black Rose Racing really good in qualifying. Katarina Malinkovic second in points at the moment. She starts third for this race. She'll start on the inside. She's against the wall, but she'll start on the inside of Sakura Kunikita, who starts in fourth position. Looking through the rest of the grid, you see Rachel Kovanemi, who is experienced at, at with the Indianapolis 500. She's making a start at the Indianapolis 500 tomorrow. So good luck to Koya Vanami as well as the other drivers in the 500 tomorrow. So a lot of exp a lot of a lot of work being done by some of the drivers doing double duty. She'll be starting alongside. We'll get a good look at all of the camera angles here. There's Bianca Lucero starting in sixth position. Then you have Elise Alexander in seventh. Eighth is BK Glover, another one doing both the the Atlantic Championship and the Indianapolis 500 this weekend. Alongside him, well, actually, to the inside of row number five, this is ninth place. This is Natalia Velisovich, who will be starting in ninth place. Tenth place is the number 10, Kata, uh, Kata, uh, Katrina o uh, Okoa. I I'm thinking Milinkovic and Okoa, so pardon me for that. 11th is where you'll find the 14 of Shinichi Kamaya, who is third in points. An impressive performance, impressive run at Chicagoland two weekends ago. Sees him up to third. Two second place finishes. What can he do? A little bit further back, but what can he do here in Indianapolis this weekend? He's starting alongside Valerie Fang, who is also in the Indianapolis 500 tomorrow. Her first 500 tomorrow. Julia Takani is going to be inside a row number seven. She's going to be alongside Nadia Kozlov for her first time at the Speedway here in the Atlantic Championship. You see that is Federica Levita in the number four. Then you have Tyler Vickery. Both of the Rockstar, both the Phantom Motor Atlantic cars sitting really far back in the field. It's Catherine Hart out qualifying her teammate Tyler Parker. The championship leader has a lot to do to get into the points here today, but he's starting 7th in the 500 tomorrow. He could probably get it done. You see, there is the 27 of Trevor Holden. Then there's the 23 of Felicia Zappa. Then there's the 7 of Akira Sato, who raced in the 500 last year, but didn't get to finish the race. Dylan Meyer is behind him. Then it's Maria Chavez who is in the 500. Most of her focus has been on the Velocity Autosport team in their champ car program. Then you have the 12 of Douglas Moat, who's outqualified his teammate, but both are at the very back of the field for this one. Fumiko Nakajima in 25th position in last place is Trey Boucher, the race winner for the sprint race in Chicagoland two weekends ago. So a lot to do for some of these drivers who looked really good in Chicagoland. We'll see if they can get it done. 60 laps for the feature race, 40 laps for the sprint race. We're about to hear the command to fire the engines, those most famous words in motorsports. So we'll send it trackside here. In a few seconds, we'll get that call. Drivers, start your engines. You heard the command to fire engines. 60 laps, at least one pit stop required. A lot of teams thinking maybe two might be helpful for the tires. 
as we get ready to go here. See the back row already lined up. Thanks to just how they were parked up here. Everyone else trying to get situated in. Everyone getting formed up and ready to go here. So it's going to be a tale of of really three three parts here. The start of the race, the middle sector, and the very end of this race. Probably all that's going to be separated by a pit stop. 26 Nissan Atlanta Championship cars making the way down the back straightaway. The pace car going at about 100 miles an hour on this formation lap here at Indianapolis. The fast speeds for a pace lap, but you also think about how fast these cars are, how fast these cars can be. Even these Atlanta Championship cars, the qualifying speed was close to 226 miles an hour. You think about the champ car qualifying speeds for the 500. They're qualifying at 233, 234, 235 miles an hour. There's still a massive difference between the two series. The pace car is in, and we are racing at Indianapolis. It's the Steak and Shake 250, race one, and Black Rose Racing working together immediately on the start to get by the 28 of Sean Jackson. So some confidence there. See everyone try to settle in a little bit. Work being done, that is the 18 of Koi Vaneri. Working to try to get second away immediately. Both the striker cars side by side, just behind that. But it is going to be Jace Clark that leads lap number one. A lot of dodging and weaving further back. That was one of the team impulse cars. That was the 26 at Kozlov. She's in front of Catherine Hart for Team M uh, for Phantom Motors. A lot of ducking and weaving on the front straightaway. That was a surprise. Jay Slark's still leading, but it's Clovin Amy hot on the heels. We're gonna make a move into turn one. Clovin Amy will make it happen. Think about the the development, the development race in Champ Car, we're seeing a lot closer racing in the Atlantic race here than what we will in the Champ Car race tomorrow. 500 will be a little bit more calm, I think, as everyone kind of figures out where their spot is going to be. All these drivers, a lot of these drivers, it's their first time at the Speedway. Some drivers that have raced in the Indy Development League, which is the the more grassroots level, have raced at tracks near this area. Lucas Oil Raceway comes to mind, but they've never been here. Watching as both the Black Rose cars get swallowed up and sent to the back, it's side by side, Kamaya, and whoa! There is something clinically wrong. That is the other Team Impulse car. That is BK Glover. So there is something clinically wrong with those cars. Because they are weaving wildly out of turn four. Kozlov's moved up to the third, third in line on the inside lane. But there is something radically wrong for them to be weaving that much out of turn number four. That is Valerie Fang. One of several drivers running double duty. She will lead this lap, but she's not going to hold on to it. Kozlov's already to her inside. And when you're once you've been moved to the outside lane, it's you're just going to have to mind your P's and Q's. All 26 cars still in this pack. This is reminiscent of when these cars used to race the 500 back in the 2010s. A lot of pack racing. These cars are slower, but not by much. They're not by they're not slow enough for it to be a significant impact. It's when they wreck, it's still gonna be a violent crash. 
Speed Demon Motorsports 1-2. Across the line that time. They're not going to be that way for long. That is the 20th Kinikita on the inside. Already shuffling Trevor Holden to the outside. A question a lot of people watching this will ask, well, why don't you just defend the bottom? Tire wear is so important. Uh, it's it's harder to stay on the bottom than what it is to just sweep up and take the high line and just kind of coast it back. Everyone that's stuck on the inside lane has to pull a little bit harder. They have to run to the corner a little bit harder. So it does scrub the tires. Everyone that's on the bottom for an extended period of time will suffer more and more tire wear. And that affects you negatively. It's not a great feeling. Now, likewise, they're, at the end of this run, they're going to have the track position whereas those that are on the outside lane saving tires will not. So there is a bit of a give and take, as you can see that there, there has been some attempts to defend that inside lane. It just, it's so futile in these cars with how much, how much, oh, there's crash. That is a crash, that is a big one. Oh, a huge crash. Huge crash. Everyone's racing to the line. They've crossed the line, so now they will slow down. A horrible crash. It looks like both of the striker cars are in it. That is Valerie Fang. That is one of the Black Rose cars. That looks like that is Malinkovich. The other Black Rose car, Jace Clark, was involved. His race is probably done. Everyone that was in the far back got through that, it looks like. But a horrible crash, and it looks like there might still be issues for one of the dead last racing cars. That is the 12th car of Douglas Moat. And you see some of the damage done to Malinkovic and Valerie Fang. Several cars out of this race. Hard impacts. We're going to go and take a look at this real quick. So while they go through pit lane here, we're going to set up the, the replay here. So we're going to set up this replay here. They have red flagged the race. Trying to get a look here. See if we can get it all settled up. Making sure we've got the clearance from Horizon Corporation to show this footage. We know that we have the uh, the champ car banner up. So give us a second here. There it is. So we're in a holding pattern. All the cars are on pit lane and are being held on pit lane here.
as you're trying to get a gauge of who all was involved in this accident. All right, so we're going to show you one image of this crash. This is all we can show you at the time. We can't show you any onboards or anything yet as we try to figure this all out. But this is the from image the, the short shoot between turns three and four. This is aimed at turn four. There's two static cams. One's in turn three, one's in turn one's aimed at turns three, one's aimed at turn four. A vicious crash. An absolutely vicious crash. Multiple cars involved in this one. You see the car that's running slow on the grass, that is Elise Alexander. She was not involved in the accident. She got the car pulled to essentially a stop and had to fight to keep it from stalling. But that is all that we can show you at the moment right now. We're gonna step away. We'll be here to try to process what happened. And when we come back, we will hopefully have some more information for you for this event.
we are back. The Nissan Land Championship, Mellow Yellow, with the Stake and Shake 250 here in Indianapolis under red flag conditions for cleanup efforts. All of the drivers have been taken to the Infant Medical Center. Some of them have been checked and released already. Others still waiting on what we hear from them. We're waiting on what we hear from Julieta Kani, from Shinichi Kamaya, and from Federico Levita. Those are the three drivers that took the hardest hits in this accident here on lap number seven. We're going to ride on board with Trey Bechet, who was in the last row of cars going through this accident. It is a very vicious accident. Just be warned. And as you can see, Bechet missed just about all of it. So we're going to go back here. This is Elise Alexander, the Chicago Land Future Race winner. She was involved in this. We said before we went away that she was not involved. She did get a piece of this, and we'll show you why. Yeah, she rolls away here. And you see that she does go to pit lane. So, reason why this accident happened, we'll see if we can find it. This is why the incident happened. Nakajima, Levita, and Valerie Fang. What are you buying in this accident? We'll actually, we'll actually go with Fang's on board here. And you see the viciousness of the crash. You see how how damaged Fang is in that in that encounter. We'll go to the Connie because the Connie took a massive hit. The reason why is because there is a jut out. For the safe for the safer barrier. This is one of those tracks where safer barrier is not all the way around the track as you can see. It's just concrete here and it's concrete in the short shoot between the corners. You see Levita squeezes Nakajima down, Nakajima pops back up. And you see just how vicious that accident is. Thankfully no one got into the catch fence. But it was a massive accident. So as we as we mentioned before, and that's a look at the car back in pit lane now. That's where we're waiting on the results of what we hear from Levita, uh, Takani, and uh, Shinichi Kamaya. Those two guards took the hardest hits. But we are under red flag conditions here. And we will wait for further news. We'll be back with more information shortly right after this break.
We're back to racing. We're back to yellow flag, I should say. Here at Indianapolis for race one of the Steak and Shake 250 here at Indianapolis. Yellow flag's out. You see all the cars coming through, coming from pit lane to catch up to the pace car. Several cars involved in that accident on lap number seven. Valerie Fang and Katarina Milinkovic. The only two involved in the accident that are still running. See the cars out of this race. Elise Alexander's out of this race. You see Federico Levitas out. Julia Takani. The 14 of Shinichi Kamaya and the 6 of Jace Clark all out of this event. The good news we have for you is that all of the drivers minus Shinichi Kamaya have been checked and re released so far from the infield medical center. A welcome sight after what was a vicious crash. In the race lead. One of the Cherokee GP cars out of this race, the other one in the in control of this race. As we start lap eleven, lights on the safety car are out. Twenty-one cars still running. You have the eight and the five, Valerie Fang and Katarina Malinkovic, who are wounded. Fortunately, there are two races, and all the teams have spares, so the drivers that are out of this race will be able to hop into those spare cars. Or, in the case of Fang and Milinkovic, try to get theirs repaired after this race to get it ready for the sprint race. But a terrifying result uh, on lap 7. Still waiting on what we hear from Shinichi Kamaya, who is still in the infield medical center, to our understanding at the moment. All of the other drivers, Takani, Levita, Clark, and Alexander. Alexander made the pit lane on her own power and retired the car. So she's fine. But here we go. Everyone's starting to bunch up a little bit. An amazing run from Julia, from, from Maria Chavez. I was about to say Julia Tagani, but she's not in this. Chavez timed that right, so it's a group of four in this lead group right now. See if Tyler Vickery and Sakura Kunikita can get on. It looks like they do. But a lot of spread out. Field. No one wanted to be in that pack race anymore. Don't blame them. That pack racing affair is what led to the lapse of an accident. But we're back at it. It's Akoa leading Glover and Maria Chavez. Akoa and Chavez, teammates for Velocity Autosport in tomorrow's 500. Not teammates right now. And both of them getting, getting shuffled backwards. Glover's going to try to go for the lead here at Indianapolis. Glover, the 2015 Indy 500 pole sitter. Has a bit of experience here. He's been racing at the Speedway since 2011. So a lot of experience for the Texas native. He will not lead this lap, though. It's going to go to probably Tyler Vickery, who moves to the inside here. It's a group of eight. A way smaller group. Then you have a single file line. Then you have a little bit more pack racing. You see Felicia Zappa was sleeping on that restart. And you see the damaged cars of Malinkovich and Fang trying to stay together. But they will be lapped. So this will be an interesting development. We'll watch how it unfolds. 
Vickery did lead that last lap. Right now it is Tyler Parker who is racing in the 500. For a lot of the drivers racing in tomorrow's race, now the mindset is, okay, we can't afford to be involved in something like that. Think about the drivers taken out of this race. Levito, not in tomorrow's race. Takani, not involved in tomorrow's race. Kamai is not involved in tomorrow's race. Chase Clark's not. Elise Alexander is not. Malinkovic is, uh, is not. The only one that is is Valerie Fang. So everyone else that's in the tomorrow's race, you think about Parker, Glover, Chavez, Akoa. Obviously, and then you think about Koivaname even. Now they've, the, the mindset's different immediately now. Obviously, Tyler Parker in contention to try to win a championship, but how much is that championship worth over potentially not being able to participate in tomorrow's race? There's a group of eight, and then there's a different group. So we've got two packs, essentially. Akoa is going to go back to the point with Glover in tow. Common courtesy right now being practiced by everyone in this top group. That is a car in the pit lane. That was Malinkovic. Malinkovic in the pit lane. Graciously in the pit lane. We'll see where she cycles out. There's Valerie Fang. We'll see if she might take up the same idea. Probably not, but we'll see if it does. Malinkovic probably dealing with some residual damage still. There's only so much that you can repair during the race. They were permitted to work on the car during the red flag period, which is why they were able to stay on the lead lap to begin with. And st obviously in stock car racing and so on and so forth, you cannot work on cars during red flags. That's sort of an American practice. Uh, but... Horizon Corporation, as far as the Atlantic Championship, as far as the Champ Car World Series, you can work on your cars during the flies. You see a mass... The, the packs have come back together at the worst possible time. And everyone's going to try to split Valerie Fang, who is way off pace. And everyone checks up. This is not going to be pretty. Everyone's getting really loose trying to get past that eight car who comes into pit lane and you see the calamity that almost ensued gracious enough Akira Sato being one of the biggest benefactors a lot of people laughed him off after his performances in champ car last year where he didn't finish any of the three triple crown races right now he's showing that he's got some maturity in him after those, that experience last year as he sits now in the lead of the race. It's him, Kinikita, Chavez, and then Tyler Vickery, and there's Milinkovic up ahead, but now it's a bit more manageable, at least for the leaders right here. This group of four is gonna be able to make a move to the inside of Milinkovic here. They check up just to be safe. Kinikita didn't, I'm not sure what Kinikita did there, but she held back massively. Kinikita not thinking smart here. Now she's going to make a move, but it's stacked everyone back together now. So now Akira Sato has an incredible lead. And no, there's a car in the wall. Did they save it? The answer is no, they did not. Everyone checked up under yellow again. Malinkovic did her job, and she ends up as a collected part of that accident. Caution number two. One of the Phantom Motors cars is out well, it's like Catherine Hart. Look here, that is the 26. Cliff and Amy's out. 
Malinkovic is almost certainly out. See how visible there's any damage on Felicia Zappa's car, but she was behind. There's definitely damage to Sean Jackson's car. And Valor Fang was in pit lane getting repairs. That car looks a lot better now. But a lot of damage here for several cars. Catherine Hart, the, uh, that is Nadia Kozlov. This is everyone going in down towards pit lane. So see a little bit of damage on that that left side, that left side of the rear wing. So that car is not completely healed. We will go and take a look at that accident. So this is what happened here. We'll take a look at the full lap, because it starts when Kunikita decides to stay behind Malinkovic. Malinkovic was going slow, and she was being predictable. And no point is she unreasonable in her moves here. Malinkovic sits still, and Kunikita just sits and waits and waits and waits and waits and waits, and then finally moves after everyone's already checked up. Sato's got an, an amazing gap here. So we're going to pause it here and pull it up because it all happens because Trey Boucher gets loose, I believe. No, he just stops turning. And that is a hard hit from Milinkovic off of the safer barrier. And you see, that's Nadia Kozlov that gets hit. That is a hard hit for Milinkovic. being forced into the safer barrier like that into a it's such a violent impact obviously you see sean jackson not really anywhere for him to go this is everything further in the back this is sean jackson that we're focusing on here a hard impact quite a name with a really hard impact Catherine hart pirouetting in the air a little bit sean jackson over to go luckily he was cushioned by being behind both Hart and Koivanami. And then Kozlov, unsighted, doesn't know where everything is going, and she gets tagged as well. Jackson's still in this race. But for Malinkovich, for Kozlov, Catherine Hart, and Rachel Koivanami, they are out of this race. It is Akira Sato at the point. That is Valerie Fang. Cameron Jackson's been in and out of pit lane for repairs. So it's still Akira Sato. We are on lap 23 of 60. And these drivers are going through a massive culture shock. Sato, Chavez... And Kunikita. Oh, your top three. Tyler Parker sits fourth. BK Glover fifth. So veterans do kind of encompass the top five here a little bit. Then you have the three guard Bianca Vichero, Trevor Holden, Tyler Vickery. Natalia Velisovich and Katrina Okoa in the top 10. The 19 car of Miku Nakajima is a lap down. She picked up some sort of damage when she went over debris from that last accident, so she is now a lap down. Sean Jackson is on the lead lap, last car on the lead lap, but now he's wounded. And then you have Valerie Fang, who is just ahead of Sean Jackson now. So both of those are both coasters are in the back. Valerie Fang's car looks a lot better than what it did. But there's realistically only 14 cars left that have a realistic, viable shot at this race. The feature race, which is almost to the halfway point now. It is Valerie Fang, not Valerie Fang, Akira Sato, leading us to the green flag. For the second restart of this race, 
And we are going green. Sato, Chavez, Tunikita, Parker. Top four. Glover hung back a little bit. I believe that it's Nakajima behind him, it is. So you see Nakajima's back up and running. See if she's on pace. It looks like she's on pace. She's hanging with Glover pretty well. Then there's a gap all the way back to Lachero and Holden. They, they were sleeping on the restart, and everyone else kind of spaced back. Trying to prevent another incident like that from occurring. At this point, people are kind of settling, hoping to just get some laps uh, clocked in here. We still don't know if there's another pit stop left or not. We, we aren't sure what the data on that looks like, if there's another pit stop needed to get to the end of this race. Kunikita hanging on to the lead pack, five. And then you have to look a second and a half back to Holden and Lucero coming out of turn two now. Top five, all five different teams. Parker's going to make a move on Kunikita to try to move closer to the front. The closer you are to the front, maybe the safer you'll be, I think, so maybe the mindset here. He's going to put both the soccer motorsports cars side by side. Nakajima's not going to have her teammate any room to really breathe here. Actually, looks like she might have just backed off there. She did. She backed off and let her teammate in. Smart team play there between the Sakura Motorsports cars, the super dry orange and white machines. Sato's still leading this race. Glover and Parker side by side. Chavez is going to be shuffled backwards. So will Parker. And then it's a line of stern in that second pack. Two seconds adrift. Koivinami, who is out of this race, and Malinkovic out of this race, getting reports that they have been checked and released. Unsure as if to if Malinkovic and Kamaya will be racing in the sprint race. But they have been checked and released from the infield medical center, which is located in turn four. Which is fantastic to hear. We, we think about the tragedies that occurred this time a, a year ago. I'm thinking about Giuliano and Saldi and Tim Cording in the 500 last year. Anytime you see a crash like that, it's it's mortifying. So good to hear that everyone that has been involved in accidents so far today has been okay. Hopefully, we don't see any more. That was some of the concerns raised by some of the team principals when. They announced that this car would be the car of choice. The, the issue with pack racing, the inherent pack racing that comes with this car, with the, the aerodynamic design properties of this car. How would they handle it putting a lot of the future stars of American open world racing in them? It's an interesting idea, an interesting way to cut your teeth and get your way up through the ladder. But it's the most viable thing in the world. It's hard to argue. Nakajima's going to try to get her lap back. And it's going to force Akira Sato out of the race lead. Tyler Parker now. The hometown driver. Sitting at the point of this race. With Nakajima hoping that she can keep her lap in case another caution happens. If she can keep her lap here, she'll be back on the lead lap. And it'll put her back in contention for some really solid points. Top 10 score points. Nakajima is not far from that gap right now. Parker, however, wanting to make sure she takes a lap down. He knows that she's capable of getting up through the field if she needs to. He followed her up to the lead. So put her a lap down and try to get all that taken care of. Glover and Chavez round out the top three at the moment. Then it's Sato and Kunikita rounding out the top five. And then it's a, a battle further back, essentially for, for, for sixth. Velicevic, Meyer. And you see, Chavez got really loose there. Chavez in second place. That gap is, it's, it's not growing as much anymore. 
but there's still definitely the gap the gap is starting to shrink now it's 2.3 it was 2.5 so two tenths shaved off that time as everyone tries to figure out where they're going to go Everyone's still racing their way around here. Kunikita making a move for third again on Akira Sato. Looking at Kunikita, the first car one lap down. She was center of your screen. Move up to Tyler Parker now, who is now center of your screen in that Phantom Motors car. We are going to catch up to Sean Jackson and Valerie Fang here in a minute. And there absolutely is the concern of what will happen when they get to them. Tyler Parker has been a very vocal critic of some of the, the lapped car etiquette. The Rising Corporation and the series officials, both in the Atlanta Championship and in the Champ Car, have said it's the, the, the lead lap car's job to get by. They've been relatively laissez-faire, whether that's better or for worse. That is how it has been ruled. Kunikita is moving up to the front of the field at probably the worst possible time. She's the one that really didn't move on Malinkovic when she could have. which caused the stack up that ended up with that second caution. And Milenkovic was an innocent bystander in it. So we'll see how this one goes. Trey Vachey, the driver that was, that ended up pushing Milenkovic into the wall and into that crazy flip is sitting in ninth position so he came away unscathed in that incident everyone's moving the soccer motorsports cars out of the way everyone anticipating everything and it's going to be ooh. everyone get kind of stuck there sato has the preferable lane it just can't even make a move on sean jackson is Sean Jackson going to give him that space or not? So it's going to be a bit rough. He's going to have to make a move in the short shoot here. They are going to lose a lot of time. Sato coming into pit lane. Sato's the only taker for pit lane. Strategy now being played. And it's an interesting call. Nakajima is still stuck behind the aid of Valerie Fang. I'm watching this with anticipation. It is Kunikita and Glover. Parker was trapped. Nakajima, who's a lap down, trying to get by. There's Trevor Holden trying to get by as well. So they are going to start following their way through here. Trying to get the pit lane. That was Valerie Fang trying to get the pit lane, and that's Chavez collected. And one of the, both of the dead last racing cars. And that's the 12 car of Douglas Moat who hit the pit wall. A bad call by Valerie Feng. And Akira Sato banks out. That is Valerie Fang resting against the pit wall. We'll take a look at that.
Let's take a look at this here. Nakajima goes by, Holden goes by. That's the Dylan Meyer that goes by. She's up on the top lane. There's no doubt in, at all. She tries to cross down. A very poor move by the Hong Kong driver. Collects Maria Chavez. Almost gets collected by Katrina Okoa, who luckily <laughs> braked in dime. Trey Bechet, not so lucky to avoid this accident. Tyler Parker, what an amazing job to avoid that accident. Tyler Parker, I don't know if he avoided all of the accident. We'll take a look here. When the onboard cameras will look to see if he if he gets through this one without touching anything. It looks like he does. Okay, so he does. Ta he tags Melissa, but she was riding the wall here. Luckily, she's not in the fence. I haven't pulled any of the repair vehicles out. So Parker does get tagged, it looks like. But that could have been a lot worse. And you see Boucher, who I thought had been. I thought he had hit the wall. He tags the wall a little bit. Go out to the field here. That is Velisovich, who was on the wall. We just watched her on the wall. She is trying to make it back to pit lane. Her race is probably done. But she does make it to pit lane. And as you can see, her, her day is done. Amazing that Velisovich could drive that car back to pit lane. Sean Jackson, Sakura Kinikita, and Akira Sato. Sato came back in to make sure that he was safe and good to go. A smart move. He would have been on older tires. It has been a race of attrition. And Velisovich lost fuel. I wonder why she would have lost fuel, seeing as how she was on the she was grinding against the wall. It's good to see Velisovich had the wherewithal to try to get that car back to pit lane. That was impressive. However, that means Maria Chavez is out of this race. Valerie Fang is out of this race. The 19 of Fumiku Nakajima still one lap down. The 11 car, that is Trey Boucher. We'll see how damaged he is. And it seems like Douglas Moat, who was also involved in that accident, relatively unscathed. Velisovich, who won someone who took the hardest impact. Made it back to pit lane, so technically Velisovich doesn't even have to go to the info care center. She made the pit lane and got out of the car under her own power, and the rules dictate is if if you make it to pit lane under your own control, you can bypass the medical trip. Twenty laps to go. It's still anyone's ball game if you're in this race. Can't say no to anybody that is still running at this particular point in time. Sean Jackson, who is a lap down, he's in front of this field. It's not going to be pretty. We are looking at Kunikita here. Center your screen. Probably one of the most timid drivers in the field. 
and Akira Sato is frustrated. Wasn't a great move by Sean Jackson there to move to the bottom. I wouldn't say, but Nakajima's gonna get through. Trevor Holden's gonna take the lead. And that was almost disaster. Sean Jackson tried to move to the bottom. Tyler Vickery was there. Nikita essentially needing to spell her out for her that she needs to pass the 28 car. Baffling move by the 20th Kunikita. Not sure it's one that's appreciated either. Holden's trying to put Nakajima back one lap down here. She's on the lap technically at the moment. But not for much longer than it's Tyler Vickery, Tyler Parker. It's the Tyler and Tyler show, second and third. Then you have Dylan Meyer and Bianca Lucera. Not too many teams have cars left in this one. It's Speed Demon Motorsports and Soccer Motorsports, I think the only team that have both of their cars still in this one. Actually, excuse me, Swift Autosport does too. Both their cars are still in. That is the 12 of Douglas Moat. That is the 7 of Akira Sato. That is the 10 of Katrina Okoa. And then there's the 23 of Felicia Zappa. And you see the damage done to Trey Bechet's car has rendered him off pace. Coming to 15 laps to go. Through Trevor Holden, Tyler Parker, Tyler Victory will be how it is across the line. Nakajima having to essentially act as a pick for her teammate here. Kunikita is too timid, I think, for the oval racing aspect here. Just way too timid to, to actually take the initiative to get past wounded cars. And it's not in the best interest here. Nakajima is going to make a move on Holden to try to make this happen. 14 laps to go. Kunikita going to take the position away from Nakajima, who is a lap down. And then it's going to be Vickery moving to the point here. Kunikita moving out of the way. Everyone in this group here trying to figure out how long it's going to take to get from the back to the front. Soccer Motorsports have their answer. Now they've got to time it right. We haven't seen too much blocking since the first accident. Wonder if you'll start seeing blocking once we get under 10 to go. That is Dylan Meyer on the point. Lucero briefly tried to, t tried to play both lanes, but that didn't work very well. And now she'll start going backwards. Glover and Parker, former teammates in Team Impulse. And now they're racing against each other on different teams.
Coming to 10 to go. I mean, the nine to go. We're looking at Tyler Parker as he tries to make his way back to the front of this lead pack. It's still Dylan Meyer. Did he make a move at the right time? Can anyone get to him and pass him? An interesting question to ask here. And there they are coming on Trebuchet. Meyer shot the outside. A smart move. Now everyone's got to scramble to get by again. Bechet moves to the outside. That is the line that race control says you should probably move to on the ovals. Give the inside for the race leaders. So that was done correctly. Don't think Bechet was expecting them to come up on him so quick, but it is what it is. So now it's Glover that has to chase down Dylan Meyer. Trevor Holden. They're going to get to him in a hurry because he couldn't get past Sean Jackson. Holden's going to take control of this race thanks to his teammate. Teamwork on the Speed Demon Motor Force side of things. And now it's Parker on pursuit. Tyler Parker trying to make two race wins in five races. Seven to go. Holden, Parker, Lucero, top three. Nakajima's between Parker and Lucero. Then it's BK Glover down in fourth. Fifth is Tyler Vickery. There is a car on pit lane, it sounds like. That is a Kurosato. So Sato back on pit lane and in front of BK Glover. Not the smartest move, chopping off cars at pace. More cars are coming in. Oh! More cars in pit lane now. They couldn't make it far enough. The red Firestone tires could not get them far enough ahead. So this could be an interesting battle coming out of pit lane to try to figure out who's going to win this race. Everyone trying to leave pit lane as soon as they can. That is Vickery and Holden. Parker with a slower pit stop. He's now in range of Lucero. Glover. And you hear there's Sato. Akira Sato now in range. He's getting past the, the 20 of Kunikita. So now it's in the hands of Tyler Vickery. 
As everyone else comes to pit lane. Coming to four laps to go. It was a matter of who was going to blink first, and it was... Akira Sato, one of those that blinked first. And he gained several positions from it. He's now in sixth place. But now it's a two-horse race to try to figure out who's going to win this one. Trevor Holden won the sprint race at Richmond. Tyler Vickery has only scored one points finish. He scored a fifth in the Chicagoland feature race. Can he score another one? And can it be the top step of the podium? Trevor Holden's going to try to stop him. It would double Trevor Holden's points tally so far this season. He's right there on the gearbox. Three laps to go. What has been a very crazy and hectic and arguably messy race could have a thrilling finish. Going through turns three and four. Coming to two laps to go here in Indianapolis. Still Vickery in front and holding in second. Holden's going to make a move now. Through turns one and two. Trevor Holden trying to make it two race wins in the season. His first feature race win. Tyler Vickery capitalizing on the mayhem to try to get into the top 10 in points. Four seconds between Vickery and Parker. One lap to go, presented by Geico. Is Vickery going to take it from him on the final lap? Will lap traffic get in the way? A lot to figure out. That is the 19 of Nakajima. Is the is there enough turbulence from Nakajima's car to help Trevor Holden hold off Tyler Vickery coming out of turn four for the final time? Vickery's close, but it's not going to be close enough. Trevor Holden will win the feature race at Indianapolis. Tyler Vickery second. BK Glover takes third away from Tyler Parker. Parker fourth. Fifth with Lucero. Sixth. Will be Akira Sada, who got past two turns one and two by both Sakura Kunikita and Dylan Meyer. So a close battle there. Two points for Douglas Moat, one point for Katrina Okoa. Just outside the points is where you'll find Felicia Zappa. Right there is where Felicia Zappa is. And the 19 of Fumiku Nakajima in 12th place. The 28 of Sean Jackson, two laps down in 14th and 13th. As you saw here, is Trey Bechet. And then you see the non-finishers due to the crazy accidents we saw. There'll be an interesting sit-down between the race director and the series officials and the drivers and teams to try to get that all sorted out. Between now and the sprint race in just an hour. And between now and the sprint race is the Pit Crew Challenge. Pit Crew Challenge normally happens on Carb Day, which would have been yesterday. But due to the rained out times we have saw in during the week last week, they've allowed more practice yesterday. So today's where all the pit crew challenge stuff happens, all the festivities leading into the 500. Tyler Parker extends his championship lead with Malinkovich and Kamaya out of this uh, out of the race early. Trey Bechet not scoring points. Trevor Holden 
will inherit second place. But at one hour time, we'll keep you posted on what the starting grid is going to look like if all the drivers in the race will actually make to the grid several violent crashes. All the drivers ended up being okay, thankfully. That's what we love to hear. No one got to the catch fence, thankfully. So stay tuned to the CRC social media page at the CRC.tv for more information. We're going to send it to the CRC Tower in Charlotte, North Carolina, where you can catch up on all the latest action and to catch the Pit Crew Challenge for the Champ Car World Series before the Indianapolis 500 on tomorrow. Again, one hour's time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, the Sprint Race for the Steak and Shake 250. So we'll see you then.